we are going to do some discussion and a kind of a little diagram on um, when to use which probability rule. There's always confusion and that's a big question is when do I use the and probability? When do I use or probability? When do I use conditional probability? So maybe this will help some of you who struggle with when to use which probability. And this is not just a, a hard and fast rule. I honestly would rather you do this a little bit more by feel and um, kind of, but I understand that sometimes that's not possible or you're not quite confident in that yet. So we're going to kind of diagram out when to use which probability. Okay. So the first question that I say that you should probably be asking yourselves when you encounter a probability problem to kind of hash out what probability do you rule to use is are you choosing more than one? Is this experiment happening more than once? So we'll start with that question. So are you choosing more than one? Or are you, is this experiment occurring more than once? I could say. Okay, so if you are rolling the die um, more than one time, rolling the die twice or rolling two die, or if you are selecting two cards, then the answer to that question, are you choosing more than one, would be yes. So we'll do a little arrow and talk about when, what we would do next if the answer was yes, okay? And then if you are, of course, doing this just once, choosing one person, flipping the, co flipping the coin once, um, rolling the die once, choosing one card, and the answer to that question would be no, I'm just doing it one time. Um, and in that case, we, we will move on as well. So this is when we're just choosing one. We'll start over here if the answer to this question was yes first. So if the answer to that question is yes, I'm choosing more than one, I'm flipping the coin more than once, um, then we would know that we are going to be using some multiplication rules. And there's a few of them. There's two of them. So the next question that we have to ask ourselves now that we know that we're dealing with multiplication um, is, is, are these two events or more than two events, are they independent? Do they have an effect on each other? So are the events, are the experiments, we'll say events, independent? Are the events independent? If the answer to that question is yes, they are independent. This is when they have no effect on each other. This is like flipping coins or rolling dice. Every time you pick up that coin or that die, it resets, the problem resets. Or if you're drawing cards with replacement, resetting the deck each time. Um, if the events are independent, then we use our multiplication rule for independent events, which is the probability of um, A and B would be equal to the probability of A times the probability of a b of b. If the answer to that question is no, these two events are not independent, they do have an effect on each other's probability if they were to happen, then we use a general multiplication rule. Which is the probability of a times the probability of b given a. Okay, the general multiplication rule. Okay, um, so that's if the answer to this question is yes, and then we move on asking ourselves about multiplication rules. Also, keep in mind with um, things that can be using the multiplication rule, um, sometimes we can make our problem a little bit simpler by using counting rules. or using um, the binomial. We may not have talked about the binomial uh, yet in class, if you're watching this at, at some point, uh, but we will. In this unit, we'll get to the binomial, and it makes multiplication rules that are independent events a little bit easier. So sometimes instead of using this, we would use the binomial. And same with counting rules. We may not have gotten to that yet, um, but we will, and it also can make some of these a little bit easier. So these are some options as well for multiplication rule, um, just so that you know those are coming. Okay, so let's go back 
to if the answer to this first question is no, I'm just choosing one. Um, if we are just choosing one, the next question that we need to ask ourselves is, is there a condition on the problem? And this should stick out right away, honestly. Um, you're probably going to notice it first off. If it says something like, given, um, or we know that this has happened. So this is a conditional probability. If the answer is yes, and we know we're going to be using conditional probability. Okay, so the conditional probability rules is when we have the probability of an event be a second event given that something has already happened. Um, and we take the probability of the two events happening at the same time, A and B, over the probability of A. Okay. And we would use a condition um, and use a formula when there's only one event that we're asking ourselves about. Okay, Does this happen given that something else has happened? Like, um, we know we drew a red card. What's the probability of a king? Okay, We assume that. That would be a conditional probability. But if the answer is no, there's not a condition, there's not a given, then we move on. So now um, we ask ourselves, does the probability problem, does it say or? Does it say or? Um, like is it something like, is, what's the probability of getting a two or a three when you uh, roll a dies, or what's the probability of a king or a queen? And those are going to be, if we have the answer to that being yes, then that's going to be our addition rolls. Okay. If the answer is no, it does not say or, then you're probably, not, not, not a hard and fast rule here, but you're probably dealing with a problem that you can, you can solve um, with equally likely events or relative frequency or subjective probability. So just that very simple probability that we looked at in the first section of this unit um, with just taking the frequency over the sample size or um, just like what's the probability of, of a six on a die, just simply taking um, the number of events, number of outcomes in the event over the number of um, possible outcomes. So this is probably a very simple probability. So I'm just going to say simple probability that you can do without really any rules. Okay, so th those are your equally likely events, your relative frequency probabilities. But if it did say yes and we look at addition rules, then the next question that we need to ask ourselves um, and we always ask ourselves with addition rules when they say or, is are the two events, are they mutually exclusive? So are the events mutually exclusive? I'm going to use ME for mutually exclusive, it's abbreviation. Are the events mutually exclusive? Is there an overlap? A mutually exclusive has no overlap between the two events. Okay. The answer is yes. They are mutually exclusive. Okay. Then we use our addition rule um, for mutually exclusive events, which is just simply taking the probability of A and adding the probability of B. If the answer is no, they're not mutually exclusive, then we need to use our general addition rule um, where we subtract the overlap. So the probability of A or B, I'm just going to write the formula is the probability of A plus the probability of B, and we subtract the probability of A and B. Okay. Once again, this is not, it's not perfect, but this will hopefully give you an idea um, and kind of an example of, of some questions that you should be asking yourselves when you encounter a probability problem. All right, hope it helps.